Well, hello, we want to welcome you out tonight to our live stream from Christian Fellowship Church right here in Mason City, Iowa. So glad to have many of you tune in as you have been doing over the last month. Again, God bless you. Welcome out tonight. I want to extend a huge hello and God bless you to our church members that are watching tonight. Um, I just literally cannot keep up with how many of you have been uh, messaging me and texting me and letting us know what these messages have meant to you on Sunday morning is on Wednesday night. And I think it's important. It's important we communicate this way. We stay in touch. Uh, this, this season will pass and uh, the future is bright. No matter what comes our way, we know that Proverbs is true. The path of the righteous is like the rising sun and it gets brighter and brighter until the fullness of the noonday. So it's good to have you out again tonight. And we're going to get right to the word here in just a moment. But before we do, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, from wherever we're watching, Father, uh, church members, other people, friends of ours from around the, the city, the heartland, the region, northern Iowa, southern Minnesota, Father, indeed, around the United States, we want to thank you tonight for these families that are represented. We pray tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for peace upon the minds of God's people right now peace that passes all understanding. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, the power that comes, the victory that is in our life by the way of the cross, the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we celebrated this past Easter Sunday. And Father, we thank you right now for protecting us. We speak Psalm 91 over each and every viewer tonight, each and every listener. We speak the 91st Psalm. We say this plague shall not come near our dwelling. We shall abide under the shadow of the Most High God, under his wing. We take refuge and we thank you for the safety of God. And Father, it shall not come near our house. We thank you tonight for protection and for shielding us from sickness and disease in this time. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all, all the honor tonight, Father God. Bless this, bless this time we're together, Father, this next 25 to 30 minutes. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give God a big amen. What does amen mean? It's, it means so be it, doesn't it? And, and uh, so let that come to pass. So again, welcome and greetings tonight. We're going to be picking up here again in the Word in just a few moments. And uh, I really had on my heart uh, tonight and then again on Sunday just to kind of, I've been really sticking a little bit more closer to notes than I generally do. My church uh, congregation knows this. I'm not really a big note guy. I don't stick to outlines much. I'm more kind of a uh, I guess, f kind of a freewheeling kind of thing, you know, and I kind of go wherever the Spirit of God leads me, of course, and that's good to do. Uh, here over the last few weeks, of course, you know, we're in an unprecedented time. That's how we began these series about a month ago, talking about just these unprecedented times. We've heard that word more than you probably ever want to hear again. We're talking about how we're in uncharted waters, and this is a new season, and, you know, things like this really haven't been seen in America for almost a century uh, you would have to go back to the days of the Depression, the Spanish flu, and World War II uh, to see stuff like this. So, of course, uh, we are definitely uh, looking to the Word for guidance on this. But just in these last couple days since, since Easter service, uh, the Spirit of God's been speaking to me, I guess I would say a little bit more probably prophetically about where we're at right now. Where we're going right now, you know, we've been in this now for some time. This did not pass quickly. We knew it wasn't going to pass quickly. I told you that. Um, if you're pressing in and you're in your word and you're spending time in prayer, you know there's, there's something going on just beyond, you know, a virus. And not to minimize the virus, it is, this is very frightening. And of course, we've seen its effects in some of the major cities of America. We're praying for those cities. One of my best friends, Pastor Dean Brown, he pastors out in New York City. We've We've seen uh, just, the, just the physical sickness and carnage on the people out there. And we all seem to know somebody in a city that's dealing with this and people that have lost loved ones. I've been on Facebook recently, seen a number of pastors, uh, you know, that have passed away due to this. This thing's very real. And uh, we need to treat this seriously. And so not to diminish that at all, but just kind of looking beyond this, a little bit beyond just the virus at what is really going on here. You know, if you've been around any number of years like I have, you begin to understand that there's always kind of a force behind the force. There's always something at work behind the scenes. There's usually something, there's, wherever there's a, 
there's a puppet moving, there's a puppet master, you know. And so, as I said, I've been thinking a lot about this. I've been, of course, spending time in prayer and in the Word on this, doing some things, putting some finishing touches on a book uh, that I finished here recently that's about to go to print. I'll talk to you more about that in some future broadcasts. And, you know, just in all of this, God began to speak to me a little bit more about taking these times and flowing just a little bit more and deeper in, 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 I would probably say, the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe some things God might be see, saying to us even during these live streams, just really pulling on that unction from God. And so we're going to be doing that. But um, Sunday now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a heads up for Sunday. You don't want to miss this. And uh, you need to tell your friends, you need to share this when we create the event for this live stream. I, I don't think we did one tonight. We just announced it. We're playing with different ways to do this. But when we create this event for Sunday's message at 11 a.m., uh, Sunday morning is going to be a little different. I'm really not really going to be having any prepared notes. I'm going to just really be sticking to hearing from the Spirit of God through that time I'm here in front of you. And I've been doing this long enough. I trust uh, my ability to hear from the Lord and uh, the ability to speak to, the, to, to our listeners and viewers prophetically. But Sunday the Lord told me to speak on uh, pulling back the curtain behind the curtain. And so you don't want to miss this Sunday. We're going to really, by the Spirit of God, we're going to pull back the curtain behind the curtain. And uh, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be something you need to be tuning in for. It's going to help you. It's going to give us a little bit of insight to the things that are coming. And uh, we'll get to just a little bit more about that tonight, how that's biblical. But, you know, about a month ago, we began these messages here, a little over a month ago. My first message was talking about how uh, we are living in unprecedented times. Some of you remember that if you've been watching here faithfully. We talked about the time of fear, the time of uncertainty uh, that seems to be visiting all of us, these city lockdowns, these lockdowns we're seeing throughout the country, this accelerated change that is taking place virtually every day. We're seeing it, hearing it from our politicians and, and local leaders, state leaders, federal government. And we talked about how while this might be unprecedented times, these times were not unforeseen if you're a student of the Bible. These times were not unexpected. These times were not un, uh, uh, unforeseen or unpredicted. We know they're in the Bible. I began to share with you about how Jesus and even the Old Testament prophets predicted that the day that you and I would live in would be times that were called perilous times. They'd be difficult times. One translation says, when Paul wrote to Timothy and talked about perilous times, he said, times hard to deal with, hard to bear. That's a great description of the day we're living in right now. Uh, we preached at great length. We'll not go back there for time's sake tonight, but in the Gospels, we talked about where the Lord Jesus said that these days that you and I were living in would be described, that the, the description he assigned to these days were like a woman travailing in birth pains right there before she's about to give birth to a son or a daughter. We talked about the two uh, traits of a birth pain, that they increase in frequency and they increase in intensity. We briefly talked about just some of the things those of us have seen just over the last 20 or 25 years with some of the wars and the terrorism around the world and uh, the Great Recession of 2007 through 2009 and the dot-com bust and the, the Iraq and Iran wars and uh, you, you know, all of these things going on around the world, of course. And, you know, here we are today seeing these things in America, these things around the world increasing in their intensity and, their, and in, their, in their frequency. We also began to talk about how this is a supernatural season. This is a supernatural season. You know, Brother Hagin, the founder of the Bible college that I attended and graduated from so many years ago now, I was a student there from 1988 to 1990, and Brother Hagin used to say this all of the time. I didn't just hear this in class, but for a number of years, he would share this statement until he went home to heaven in 2003. But Brother Hagin would say this, if it doesn't make sense, it's supernatural. And I remember that has stuck with me over the years. There's been so many things, you know, that I've encountered in the ministry that doesn't make sense to me. I'm just being honest with you. Uh, things people have done, things people have said, the way people act, different situations that myself and my wife have been thrust into, uh, different times of difficulty or uh, persecution even, that on any other day I might say, well, maybe that's just, you know, a passing of time. And, but 
there are some times when things, it just gets a little weird. And you begin to say, this doesn't make sense anymore. And Brother Hagin used to remind us, when it doesn't make sense, it's supernatural. Now, there's some things right now, and you all know where I'm going with this, that doesn't make sense right now. And we're probably reading a little bit about it. And there's, of course, there's a ton of conspiracies out there. You can go on the internet every day and read the paper about all of the conspiracies that are out there. And we're not fear-mongering over those over any of those tonight by any means but there are some things that don't make sense right now we're seeing a lot of stuff in america today that really quite honestly is shocking to me and it concerns me and it should concern you as a as a fellow american you know my dad and my uncles and my grandfather and my grandmother and many of my relatives you know they fought in wars and world war ii and vietnam and you know served their country admirably and faithfully and i had planned to do so uh in my own time I was going to go into the Air Force and follow in my dad's steps but obviously my Lord had uh, God had other plans for me to be a different soldier uh, not a soldier of America but a soldier of the cross and uh, I'm here to tell you right now I love this nation and, and you know I know probably every one of us would bleed uh, to keep those stripes on that flag red but I'm here to tell you right now tonight there's some things making its way into our nation we need to be careful about and uh, we're seeing some government overreach right now taking place that should be concerning. And we're seeing there's, you know, some answers we're not getting on some things right now. And so, you know, in this time that we're in right now, we need to be trusting God. We've got to be retreating to the word. We've got to be running to private times with God and getting answers and direction from him. And we're going to get to this just in a little moment in, in First Chronicles. We'll be there. But in this supernatural season, and we're all sensing this, it just feels weird and surreal. What I've kind of titled tonight is this, what has God shown us so far? What, what have we learned in this last month? What are some of the things we're seeing? What are some of the things we're experiencing? What are the, some of the things that I've, I've ministered and I've spoken to, the, to those of you that are viewing? And I mean, this isn't just our church family. I mean, this these programs are being picked up and viewed by thousands of individuals and not just through the heartland but from around the nation are watching them as well so i understand the importance and the gravity of what we're sharing here but i would say this and this might be just a quick review for just a few minutes but one of the number one things that i think that god has shown us and one of the things that has become very obvious is i've kind of hammered on this for a few messages is that crisis can lead to change if there's any good thing if there's any silver lining in a crisis it's that you and I have the ability, the opportunity, and the invitation to change in this time. You know, we talked out of Luke 15, verses 17 and 18, uh, these, these great verses about the prodigal son. And we're not going to the whole story tonight because we really covered this in depth over the last, the last month. But we talked about the prodigal son who wasted his inheritance, and he went to that country and found himself feeding the pigs, and he was hungry. And Luke 15, verses 17 and 18 said this, but when he came to his senses... Here's what he said. He said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough of bread, but I'm dying here of hunger. I'm going to go ahead and get up and go to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. And he went back. See, he came to his senses and he changed. And so in a time of crisis, you know, we could really get caught up in the finger pointing right now. And we're seeing that all over the media and all the saber rattling and all the, and, and that concerns me right now that in this time of really global crisis we have we have countries kind of backing into their respective corners of the ring and there's saber rattling going on and there's a lot of kind of cold war stuff being said back and forth between leaders of nations this should be concerning us right now we don't we don't need that type of stuff we need to definitely be praying right now for calmer minds to prevail and uh, for divine intervention in this season but in this time rather than pointing fingers and saber rattling and assigning and assessing guilt let's look at this crisis that we're in right now how can we change what can we do to uh you know i love what one of my brothers here in the church brother charlie west you know he was a a, a marine you know for a number of years and uh i love the marine mantra that we adapt and over uh, improvise and overcome we adapt and we improvise and we overcome we adapt and we improvise and overcome and so we are soldiers of the cross my friend and even though you might not be a marine we're you know really a marine of heaven and so we in this time we need to adapt we need to improvise and overcome i didn't say adapt compromise and overcome we're not compromisers but we're going to adapt to the situation 
We're going to improvise in this time. And praise the Lord, we're going to overcome. Can I get an amen from your homes tonight? So number one, in the midst of a crisis is a time of change. It's a time of opportunity. It's an invitation for you to uh, go into that cocoon as a caterpillar would and come out and soar on the other side. It's an invitation for change. Number two, and I referred to this verse earlier, over in 1 Chronicles in chapter 12, when King David is assigning his army, as he's bringing together his army, see King Saul now has perished and he's now gone. David, who's the, now the heir to the throne, is stepping into his rightful place. He begins to assemble these armies of the tribes of Israel. It's an amazing time. And all of these tribes that were waiting for David's ascension and waiting for his anointing begin to come together to him. And we begin to hear, you know, the tribe of Judah and, you know, all these different tribes begin to come together and we're getting these various numbers, you know, and there's some warrior tribes and then there's other ones that are this and then, you know, the Levite tribe and there's all of this stuff like this. And it's interesting in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, the Bible says this, 1 Chronicles 12, 32 says, and there were sons of the tribe of Issachar. I, I think there was about 200 of them. If I remember reading a little bit earlier today, there were 200 captains of that tribe. And they had other men under them that they gave it, you know, orders to and spoke to. But it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, that from the sons of Issachar, the tribe of Issachar, when they were gathering together, this army as it was forming, I hope you, I hope you kind of are listening to the spiritual impression I'm putting upon this tonight. You know, we're assembling, guys. We're the army of God right now. We're assembling together for such a time as this, for the battle that lies before us. We're in a battle, guys. We're in a battle against the forces of darkness, trying to kill people, take them out. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. So we see this amazing principle about the sons of Issachar. Notice this here. Men who understood the times, and they had knowledge of what the nation should do. I love this verse. I have loved this verse for years. That men that would understand the times, and that they would know what their nation should do. I remember, oh, I don't know, eight or nine or ten years I was a good friend of mine in church, Pastor Bill Tweed. Uh, he, I'm dropping all the names of my friends tonight, but we love him so much, and we're just, we're just knitted together in this battle. But I remember I was down at his church one time, and I was down there listening to a guest speaker speak, and the guest speaker was just moving in the Spirit of God, and at one point he called me up. He said, Pastor Shane, come here, come here. And he began to pray over me, and he began to move in the gifts of the Spirit, and he began to prophesy, and he said, Pastor Shane, he said, this anointing is on you. And he, he, he said this, he said, it's like the sons of Issachar that will have an understanding of the times and, and will have a wisdom about what the nation should do. That's a heavy responsibility. And so, number one, this isn't just a time of crisis to run and hide. This is a time for change. Adapt, improvise, overcome. Come out. What did I say a couple of weeks ago? You can come out of a crisis the same way you went in or diminished, or you can come out of a crisis soaring and you can come out of that thing a giant. But number two that I would add to that is we need men and women of God right now, right now, who understand these times. Right now. We need men and women of God, preachers, evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles. We need men and women of God right now, students of the word, gifted by the Spirit. We need Christians right now, not fighting on Facebook, not, not, not going to battle over this doctrine or that doctrine. But we need people right now who understand these times and how to navigate them. You know why? Because the Bible says in the book of Daniel 7.25 that the enemy, the spirit of the Antichrist, his purpose is to come into our nation and he's going to try to speak things against God. He's going to try to change times and seasons in your life. He's trying to do that right now in America. He's going to do that right now in America. The spirit of the enemy is trying to change times and seasons in America. You know what the last part of Daniel 7.25 says? It says that he will also try to wear out the saints. That's what the enemy is trying to do right now. That is one of the assignments of your and my enemy. Is he speaking things against God? He's saying, well, has God sent this disease? Is God going to heal your nation? He's in there trying to change times and seasons. Guys, listen to me. 
Satan would love nothing more than us to go from a democratic nation into a socialist nation because socialism is baby communism. We don't need to go there. But right now, because of this affliction in our nation, we got to be careful. Americans will surrender their rights without thinking about it because we're frightened, we're fearful. We cannot allow fear to dictate us in this time, or we will surrender our constitutional rights. Guys, in some parts of America right now, the Constitution is being shredded, and you know this to be true. We cannot let fear change the times and the days of our nation, because that's what the enemy wants to do. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And so we need men and women who understand these times and how to navigate them in this nation. Yes, we do. And number three, I'm just going to throw this out because this season will pass. And I know my church people are going to be back in the house of God. But I want to say this right now for those of you, especially in listening distance of Christian Fellowship Church, you need to understand right now the necessity of church assembly. Oh, Christian Fellowship people that are at home tonight, how many of you ache for our times together? It's only been a few weeks. And our hearts are aching for our times of fellowship worshiping together as the worship team plays up here preaching the word of god the laying on of hands and altar calls and the fellowship that takes place times of communion where we break the bread and we drink the juice oh my god your heart just aches you know back and i'm i'm a you know i'm one of the wild child of the 80s and there was a song back then by a real famous rock group i don't remember the name of the group but i know i listened to the song back then and the song said this you don't know what you've got until it's gone and I hope every single one of us comes back to church with a new appreciation of what church means to us. Hebrews 10.25, you know this verse. Hebrews 10.25 says this, not forsaking our assembling together, not forsaking our own assembling together as the habit of some are. Some have made this a habit but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day that is drawing near. Will any of us view church assembly the same when this is over? No way. No way. Well, I hope we never take for granted what you and I have here in America. Boy, I'll tell you what, I, we've tasted of this now for a few weeks. Man, whew, glory to God. We need divine inter intervention from heaven. We need to roll back some of this stuff. We need these numbers of infections to decrease. We got to get back in the house of God, my friend. That's why it's so important. You got to stay strong while you're away. You got to be listening to these messages. You got to be praying with your family. You got to be speaking to yourself. What has God shown us so far? You got to change in the crisis. You need to listen to men and women of God who understand the times. You need to have a new appreciation for gathering together in the house of God when this is done. And I put down just a few more here. What else has he shown us in these last few weeks? The importance of standing in faith, not letting your faith grow weak in this season. The importance of your confession, saying the right things every day, bridling your tongue, speaking positivity and not negativity, pushing this thing back of our nation, not, not, letting, you, not letting the media take you down. Yes, be informed, but don't let it take you out. The importance of knowing your Bible. And here's another one. The importance of having that God peace in your mind. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, but as I give unto you. That's the peace that you need right now. We got to have this peace. We got to have this presence from God in our lives. Because I'm telling you right now, without that peace, without that hope, you're done. You'll give up. You'll roll over and you'll throw in the towel. But that's not us. We're victors. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. This is Bible, guys. This is Bible. What did Jesus say in the book of John? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, you shall be also. This is the word of God, guys. That's where we're going. I've read the end of the book. We win. I've read the end. We win in the end. But we got to get from here to there. And you're not going to do it by crying in the corner. You're going to do it because you're a spiritual Marine. You adapt. 
You improvise. You don't compromise. You improvise and you overcome. We're going to make it, guys. Don't miss Sunday. We're going to pull back the curtain. We're not going to be sticking to notes. We're going to flow in the Holy Ghost on Sunday. We've been building up to this. Some of you sense this has been coming. Don't miss it. You don't want to miss it. We're going to pull back the per curtain behind the curtain. We're going to let the gifts of the Spirit flow on this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on our live channel. Don't miss it. It's going to be great. God bless you guys. We love you so much. We'll see you Sunday. Don't forget, if God is for you, who can be against you?